All right, folks. Uh, this, I guess I'm due for one of those videos that piss a lot of people off. Again, it's honestly not intentional, but there's a few things that we're going to talk about so people could stop calling me and asking me these questions. Okay. Um, how do I even start this? All right, I'm going to ruffle some feathers because here's the thing. I'm going to say some names. I'm going to mention some names and not all in a bad way, some in a bad way, right? But most dog trainers are cowards and they don't like to say names. So let's get right into it. Let's start off with this. First of all, there's always so much obvious bickering between dog training camps. And I'm not talking about force-free and balance. I'm not talking about, I mean, within the so-called balance community, there's different schools, right? There's there's different um, segments of training that people belong to, and it becomes a religion. For a lot of young dog trainers, that first person that they latch on to, they start to idolize, and they look at them as a god, and they never look anywhere else. That could be a problem, okay? There's also a lot of bad judgment in the dog training world, and that scares the shit out of me. So I'll give you an example. I warned a bunch of you, and if you guys know me, I don't criticize a lot of people and, and use names very rarely. I can count on one hand in all these years where I've said anyone's name. But several years ago, a few years ago, I don't know, three, four, five years ago, I warned you guys about the fat fuck up in Maine, right? What a piece of shit he was. Some of you that were friendly with me kind of jumped away from me, didn't want to associate with me, and you sat closely by that piece of shit side. I never said anything, right? You sat right there and you were part of his world. That shows me that you have an extremely poor lack of judgment and character. And I feel sorry for anyone that ever hires you to train their dog because it says who you are. Now, some of you realized it long before all this shit came out recently and jumped on the bandwagon and went after me just like he did, right? But you eventually realized, wait a second, something's wrong here. And you were smart enough to understand this isn't right. And you got away from him real fast. And many of you reached out to me and said, look, I'm, I apologize. I was wrong. You know, I hope you could forgive me. Absolutely, not a problem. I, I stay in contact with a lot of those people and there's no hard feelings. The ones that have contacted me now, after the fact, then no, no, I'll forgive you, but fuck you. I want nothing to do with you. And if anyone ever asked me, hey, could I send my dog to this person? Fuck no, absolutely not. They sat by with that piece of shit for this long. No, absolutely not, right? So let's get that right out of the way. That's the first time I'm saying something. I warned you guys. I warned you guys a long time ago. No one wanted to believe me. Now, one of the questions that I get at least once a week, usually more. Should I go to Napopo or should I go to training without conflict, right? The Balones and Ivan Balabanov. Every single week. My normal answer is, if you could afford it, do both. That's my normal answer, right? But most people can't, so they have to decide. Here's the thing. If I got royalties, if I got a percentage for every student I sent to each school, I probably wouldn't have to train too many dogs throughout the year because there's a good chance I've sent more to both schools than anyone else. Believe me when I tell you. I think both sides know that, right? I've been very supportive of both. Okay, now you folks, let's go a little deeper into that. Sorry, shake, I just got out of the gym here. Several years ago, when I kind of jumped into the sport dog world, training, learning from those trainers, Bart was the first person that I was exposed to, right? Now, you fuckers that claim, oh, I'd really love to come to your seminar, you know, I wish you would come to my city. Well, fuck you, I don't want you at my seminar 
Because if you're only willing to go to someone's seminar, mine or anyone else that you claim you want to learn from, but it has to be in your city and you're not willing to travel, mm, yeah, no, not the kind of person I want to work with. I know that's harsh. And now I'm going to get all the people crying and the excuses. Oh, I can't do this. Well, I'll tell you what. When I first went to see Bart, I drove 14 hours each way. I didn't have a lot of money, right? I had a baby at home. It wasn't easy. My wife said, go. I know you want to learn from this guy, go. And I did. And it was worth all the sacrifice. After that seminar, it lit the fire under me because I didn't know there were dogs out there that existed what I saw that weekend and I didn't know what we can get out of these powerful animals, right? So my mind was just blown. After that seminar, I didn't look to see who was coming around next. I didn't keep jumping from trainer to trainer, right? And getting obsessed with seminars. I only went back to Bart time after time after time. To where even he said, why do you keep coming back? You know this stuff. No, I learned something every single time. And if he was one of the best, that's where I want to learn from. Okay, plain and simple. So to this day, that stuff is ingrained in me and I still utilize it. Very much so. Now, most recently, as most of you know, I took Ivan's course. I did not go get certified. I did not go down there. I had no interest in doing that. Not because I don't respect what he does. I respect Bart and Ivan and like immensely. I will never be on Bart's level. I will never be on Ivan's level. Let's just get that straight. Most people will not. They train very differently, but in many ways, similar in many ways. <sighs> I have no interest in putting no one's name on my shirt except my wife and kids. That's it. Myself, my wife, and my kids. I don't care about having anyone's name on my shirt. And to be 100% honest, I would have loved to go down and learn hands-on from Ivan. But I don't like some of the people around him. And this isn't anything new. I've told him the same thing. I don't trust some of the people around him. I think they have hurt him a great deal because a lot of people haven't had good experiences, not because of Ivan, because of some of the people around him. That's a problem, okay? Was the course worth it for me? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Absolutely, right? You see people doing great things that have gone through both schools. You see people doing terrible things that have gone through both schools. It's not the school's fault. It's not the teacher's fault. Not everyone has the same ability, okay? Not everyone has the same ability. The problem is you get these young trainers with 10 years or less in and they truly think they know everything. And if they have spent time with someone who's very influential, the ego and the cockiness goes through the fucking roof. It just does. It goes through the roof and then everyone else is wrong, right? Everyone else is wrong. Play is a really powerful powerful, powerful tool, more powerful than anything else, if you ask me. I did not just start using play in my training once I took Ivan's course. I used it long before that. Do I use it more now than ever before? Absolutely. Is he a big influence on that? Absolutely. Have I gotten better with it? No freaking doubt. No doubt. I also use food. I still teach behaviors using food. Do I withhold food from my dogs or my clients' dogs? No, I don't withhold anything from them, okay? I train the way I train. I've tried to take the best of the people I've learned from and utilize it to the best of my ability, which 
I try to get better at every single day. But for me to see people that really should not be so opinionated, constantly bashing one side or the other, just the constant negativity and criticizing each, but they're always scared to use names, right? I don't even know where, where I'm going with this, okay? But I'd rather no one ask me anymore to choose between the two and, you know, what's good about each and what's bad about each. Both fantastic. If you're looking for someone to learn from where there are no anything ever negative said by someone, <laughs> you're going to be left with two people to train with. Michael Ellis and Pat Nolan. They're the only two humans in the history of dog training, I believe, that I've never heard anything bad said about. Everybody likes them, right? That's it. Then those are the only two trainers you could ever work with. Stop believing people when they tell you something bad about someone else. Maybe that's the whole fucking point I'm trying to get here, right? Again, I go back to that fat fuck phrase in Maine that you fuckers sat by, right? I see you guys making posts now. It's good that you're making the information public, but motherfucker, you sat by that guy's side and watched all this shit go on. And I warned you, if I ever lied to anyone about anything, fuck no, never. Am I always right? No, no. But if I say something that someone sucks and is shady, it's for a reason. I'm not assuming that. I'm telling you because I know, right? You pet dog trainers, you folks that are on the internet and on Facebook and Instagram every day preaching, I don't know who you're preaching to, dog trainers, potential clients, I don't know what, but then you spend your time learning from people like fucking Jeff Gelman and Sean O'Shea, stop giving advice. Stop giving advice. You should not be giving advice to no one. Not your local shelter, not a rescue, not a 90-year-old woman with a chihuahua that has no ability to train a dog. Because you're learning from the wrong fucking people, right? With the spectacular people that you have out there, some of the ones I just mentioned, what are you doing? Like, what makes you think that the people you're working with, like when you hear so much negativity associated with someone, and I got plenty of people that can't stand me. I'll have more after this, right? If you hear so much negativity about someone, don't you think maybe there could be something there? And I wish I didn't say bad words in this video, but it, it fires me up. And what most people don't understand is my phone rings all day. Anyone that spends time with me will tell you. And a lot of those questions are always like very personal. Hey, what do you think about this person? What do you think about? Come on, you know? I did a seminar in, in North Carolina last year where I worked with a young lady that paid $15,000 to get her dog trained by a service dog trainer. Someone that most of you know. That dog came back much worse than it went in. They got a one hour go home lesson and I had to spend that weekend building this dog up to level zero. Now, this past seminar I just did recently in Dallas, I ran into two more people who were taken by the same service dog trainer. It's time we have to start outing those people because to me, that's theft, that's fraud. And you're taking money to do something you don't have the ability to do in a very, very dangerous situation, right? You can cause people a lot of harm by lying to them and robbing them. Now, I just spoke to someone yesterday that I allowed to get into one of my seminars because they have a very serious case, very dangerous case, you know, where there's, it could be potentially very dangerous, already paid for a board and train, got nothing out of it. The follow-ups they were supposed to get got nothing. They never came to do the follow-ups. 
they did offer to do another board and train for half price. That's fraud. That's thievery. Okay. That that's plain old thievery. And you guys are worried about the Napo post school or training without conflict school, not being good enough for you. Are you fucking kidding me? Start paying attention to the people you idolize and learn from. If someone has to shit on other trainers to tell you how good they are, run the other way. Run the other way. Again, go back to the fat fucking Maine. I warned you fuckers. And you fuckers that sat by his side, kept having him for seminars, you know, did podcasts with him, and now you want to cry about it? Fuck you. It shows who you really are. You were okay with what he was doing until it affected you personally. So... There's a lot of people that don't like me in this industry because I say what's on my mind, right? No one ever mentions names, good or bad. I'm always hesitant. I've given Bart credit for all these years because I respect the man so much. I've never heard him say anything bad about anyone, any training system. As a matter of fact, he was the one who said, go learn from other people. Think about that. That's someone confident enough in his ability to say, go learn from other people. You got this. Man, I respect that. And that's why I respect him so much. And I'm always going to give credit, right? Some of you guys, a lot of you, especially at the seminars, that get to benefit with my ability to get rid of serious behaviors really fast very successfully without being an asshole, right? A huge part of that is because of some of the changes I've made because of Ivan. Some of the most powerful stuff I've ever learned in dog training, by far. And I tell him that, I give him credit for that, always. You guys that have been there know I always give him credit. If I make changes to something for the better, I'm going to give that individual credit probably forever. You hear Jay give him credit all the time, right? The problem is some people like, and, and again, I've said this to Ivan, some people he has around him, you can't win. If you give him credit, it's you're not learning it from him. They don't know what they're doing, right? They're just, they live their life through through people like Ivan and, and, and Bart and other people because they have no lives on their own. But if you don't give him credit, oh, he learned that from him. You know, you think you'd give him credit. What a shitty piece of shit. So you can't win in some cases, right? Because there's shitty people out there. There's shitty people out there who ride on the coattails of others' success, right? Now, to be fair, I don't see that. Like like Bart's people, um, there was one individual that started running her mouth once and I was going to put her on blast. And when I saw she was an APOPO student, I called them and I said, listen, I'm about to really rip her apart, but I just want you to know. That's another big reason. People say, well, how come you didn't ever do the NAPO post school? There's a few reasons, right? It just never seemed to be like the best time for me. I always thought it would be there. But here's the other thing. Same thing with training without conflict. As you can see from this video, I, I have a big mouth. I can't keep my mouth shut. If I were to represent either one of those sides with their name, right? Be a graduate of their school and with their name. That's not something I would take lightly and I would have to conduct myself in a different way. I would be careful about what I say because I would want to represent either side in the best way possible. Not like some of these other fuckers do who put out these videos just to shit on everyone and show, hey, look what I could do. Look at these dogs. You don't have to have control in the house. But what they don't tell you is, hey, look, yeah, look at this off-leash dog running and playing out in the open. They don't tell you that they send that dog home and he bites three people, including two kids, and they put the dog down. You know who you are, fucker. You want to you post stuff and, and brag? be honest about everything your fucking failure rate's awfully high once those dogs go home you understand because you can't be successful by just withholding food and stuff in food in dog's face and you can't be successful by only playing with a the dog there's a lot more to it 
a lot more to all of this shit, right? Especially when it comes to a dog living inside a home with people that have more dog than they should have and have no dog training ability. They're not living with the dog trainer, so things do have to be different inside the home. So there was a lot more that I planned on saying here, but I'm already at 20 minutes. Now I don't even know if I'm gonna post this because it really is going to ruffle some feathers. But stop asking me where you should go. What you should do is learn from the best people possible, okay? So if you choose to go to Napopo, you're going to learn a ton. Now I know people that shit on that system and, and somehow would say things about Bart, which used to blow my mind. But then they wind up going and they're like, whoa, okay, I was wrong. Okay, same thing. If you go, you're gonna learn a lot. If you go to Ivan's school, you're gonna learn a lot. If you could do both, do it. And then take the best of both to your capabilities and become a better fucking dog trainer, right? Be a real student and stop marketing to other fucking dog trainers when you should not be opinionated and shitting on anyone else. No one's obligated to give you anything for free, okay? No one is obligated to give you anything. If I told you what I spent on education in the past two years, why? Because dog trainers that maybe have less uh, exposure than me or, or time in the game than me think that I just make money, <laughs> you know? You have any idea how much I have spent on education in the past two years? You wouldn't want to know. You wouldn't believe me. Shit, I just signed up as a lifetime member for uh, Canemo. Some people say Canemo, some people say Canemo. I think it's Canemo, right? Think about that, it's expensive. Worth every penny, worth every friggin' penny because they're brilliant over there, okay? Absolutely, Marco and Sarah are brilliant. And if I'm trying to succeed in IGP and learn, I have to be a full-time student. You guys know all the other people that I've subscribed to and, and learned from. And I've paid for their videos before, but I said, fuck it. I love the way they train. They're phenomenal. I love everything they do. So I'm going to be a lifetime member. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of freaking, it's not cheap, right? But it's worth it. So you fuckers that are struggling but you're training and learning from people that suck both in the craft and as humans, you're gonna stay sucking. So get out there, invest in yourself and learn from better people, whether you fucking like them or not. You owe it to the people you charge money for.